Hello and welcome back, my friends. Here we are again for episode 14 of Some Low Grade Gamers. As usual, it's just the three of us here, you know, three best friends that anybody could ever have. <laughs> so it goes. The wolf pack. <laughs> yeah, the wolf pack. I like it. The uh, Some kind of pack. The low grade pack. Anyways, <laughs> I'm Tom. Nice to see and or hear from all of you. This is Laura on my right. Hi. How are you, Laura? Good. I'm great. How are you? Good. Great. Just one word answers today. Love it. And the low-grade gamer himself is over here on my left. Dan, how are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? <laughs> It's going to be a really long, exciting podcast, my friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. How are you guys? How are you guys going? Great. Not bad, yeah. I had to take our kitty to the vet just mm-hmm. before, but he's okay. He's doing well. Yeah. My cat hates me now, but other than that. Yeah. He'll get over it. He'll get over it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you realize so got to- later on that you were just trying to do the right thing by him. When he grows up, yeah. he'll understand. It's not my fault he had a bung eye. No, he got something in his own eye. Yeah, I didn't put it in there. (laughs) All right, we've got a few interesting topics to get through today. Actually, it's just two, but I feel like we could talk for about 10 hours on either one of them. So uh, we probably hopefully that doesn't happen. See see you guys in 20 hours, apparently. Uh, (laughs) The first of which is, of course, unless you've been in a coma for the last probably like five years, you might have heard of this like little title that's been released recently. I think it's Elden a bit of an Ring. Indie, indie game. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know if Pretty it's Pretty small. Popular. I don't know if it was that highly anticipated. No, it only won two most <laughs> anticipated awards. Just two, so. Only two years in a row. Did every. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There is a bunch of stuff to go over there. Laura is actually the only one who has played it out of us. So Dan and I are going to pick her brain about it. Mm-hmm. And then, again, I think if you've been living under a rock, you might not have heard, but uh, Twitter seems to have exploded about it. Generation 9 of Pokemon has just been announced. There was a Pokemon Direct for Pokemon Day, which is, of course, the 27th of February is when Pokemon Red and Blue first were released. And they usually announce something on that day, whether it's the updates to the games they've got or, uh, you know, just whatever, more mobile stuff a lot of people expected. But we got Gen 9 announced. So that is so exciting. We're going to be over going over what else we got during that presentation quickly because it's not as exciting. Uh, but let's kick things off with Elden Ring, I believe. Laura. Tell us about it. Tell us. Well, I was talking to one of my friends while I was waiting for it to upload onto the or download onto the PS5. And he said that it was probably going to make you want to rip your dick off and throw it into outer space. And I can confirm (laughs) that that is what it's like. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) So, uh, so I shouldn't play it then? It's an accurate description. So, yeah, watch your decks. <laughs> Is this a PG podcast or it's not anymore? No. Bye. Bye, Willies. Bye. Yeah, bye, Willies. Maybe I should have said Willies, my bad. But, so yeah. It- basically, you've torn off Tom's Willie and thrown it or your own. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to judge. Mine. Oh, Yours. your Willie's gone. Yeah. So. Okay. It is as hard as everybody keeps saying it is. Like, is this one of those games they're going to bring out a DLC called Easy Mode? Like, is that like... There might be a rookie mode added later on. But no, I don't don't think that they will. It just goes against the spirit of it. Like, I thought that Metroid Dread was hard, right? Boy, was I wrong. But it is hard. Well, it's nothing compared to this. So let's go back to the beginning of the Souls series for for a bit because it is a From Software game who is the developers behind the Souls games, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and it is a Souls game. 
isn't it, Laurie? Well, it's a Souls-like game. Yeah. Yeah, obviously it's not got Souls in its title. Yeah, but it's that's not the, in the... That's the genre. That's the it? genre, yeah. It's so the there's not much... There's no hand-holding involved here. There's... Uh, the, even the tutorial is hard to find. I totally missed the tutorial, which I was kind of upset about because I really could have used that tutorial. I've never played this game before. Mean? Like you walked past it. Oh, yeah, I walked past it. So there's a bunch of like that's pretty poor notes. <laughs> if you think about if it. You play it, <laughs> if you play it in online mode, you have the ability to write a little note on the ground for other players to come up and read. And maybe it'll have a tip like, watch out to your left here, like, or there's an ambush here or et cetera. Usually it's something involving death being imminent. And so when you're in the first part of the game, there's a note on the ground that says, like, the cave of knowledge is here or something like that. But there was a million and one notes on the ground none of which I understood at the time because I didn't realize that on other online players could write notes on the ground. And so I just, oh, and so it didn't say this was part the of the game. game. I didn't know if it was the game telling me, giving me a note or one of the other players giving me a note. So I just walked past it and I didn't go to this cave of knowledge. Maybe if it had said tutorial, I would have, but that would just be too easy. Tutorial wouldn't be in the spirit. So I went in, I had no idea, like, the controls or anything even. Like, it really doesn't doesn't tell you much about anything whatsoever. So can we go back a little bit? Sorry to interrupt, but I, I was just thinking, for somebody who hasn't played a game like this or the Souls games or anything like that, what would you liken it to that's, not souls because everybody keeps saying souls but if somebody hasn't played that what would you liken it to bare bones like breath of the wild style or metroid style or it would be more akin to breath of the wilds but okay so you know when breath of the wilds when you defeat a whole bunch of like uh goblins and stuff and then they become like the white ones, like the super hard ones. Mm -hmm. It's so it's like Breath of the Wilds. If the white ones were the first color that you come across, okay. So it is an open world RPG. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Action it's adventure. open world. Uh, yeah, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it's just like all of the enemies are really, really hard, and there's bosses like heaps and heaps of bosses that are like so imagine if like there was just a lot more Lionels and Hinoxes than usual and and they were actually like your more common enemies okay and in terms of the online part here so being that uh, yes it's accepted as being a hard game with the online portion so say Yourself jumped on, I jumped on, Tom jumped on. Can we quest together? Or does it seem to deviate off? Like Destiny 2, for example, everybody's in a sandbox or room, right, if you want mm -hmm. to call it that. And then as soon as you go through a door, I'm using quotation marks for those listening, uh, you know, into, into a mission, it basically, people in your fire team in Destiny 2 is what they call it, that's what your squad's called, will come with you, but no other online adventurer will be in that section. Is that sort of what's going on or is just everybody chilling in the same box? So it's like you're on your own adventure and every now and then you can see other players playing the game, but they look kind of like ghosts like people were running around, but you can't interact with them or anything, okay. and it's like a white outline of the player. Okay, so, so that's you like can um, Forza yeah. in in Forza Horizon. Mm. It's, yeah, similar. Yeah, the, the other car when you're going sort of head on, mm. 
first it's quite dark and you can see it, but as soon as you start getting close, it does it goes out. So you can't actually crash into people randomly or do things. So basically the game protects people from other online people that say may want to be douchebags. And I'm looking at you, Grand Theft Auto online people. <laughs> yeah, it's notorious, isn't it? It's yeah, true. yeah, you, it's true. You can't you can't play GTA online play without dying. How is how is it online? So the people that you can see running around, you have the ability to write notes, as I was saying before. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they could be tips like um, a lot of them say that there might be a hidden passage ahead. I think that there must must be an item that you can reveal hidden passages. I don't think I have it yet, or maybe I need to hit a certain part of the wall or something. But I've seen a couple of notes saying that there's hidden passages. There's some notes that, yeah, will say that there's an ambush in a room ahead, or there, there could be any sort of note that when I first started playing, a lot of them are just like, Yay! Elden Ring! Sometimes they can just be really random things. So it's a bit lackluster there. Well, that's like not the only aspect. That's just two aspects. Okay. So there's also um, fingers, severed fingers that you carry around with you oh. in your bag. Brutal. Mm -hmm. Normal. You can yeah, use these fingers. <laughs> yeah. Mine are toes, <laughs> to like but, you know. Yeah, you're more of a toes man. Yeah, I'm, I'm a toe guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair oh, enough, this, you know. This podcast is definitely our fingers or now. toes, fingers or toes. <laughs> anyway, in this game, it's fingers. Yep. So you can use the fingers, and then you can be summoned into somebody else's game to help them defeat a boss, which is pretty cool. When you say summoned, yep. you don't have a choice, or they ask you. Uh, well, you can only be summoned once you use the, the finger. Oh, okay. So and you use you, the finger and then uh, you go into somebody's game. Some, so mm -hmm. is or it, uh, yours. Or there's another item that you can use, but it's consumable. It's not reusable. Um, but you can summon other players to your world. Okay. If you are really struggling with a boss or something like that, you have the ability to summon other players and they'll come and help you. So or these random players, or you can actually have yep. friends join you as well. I don't know if there's any control over who it is, but I also don't really have many friends to test it out with. Any friends? <laughs> I'm going to be. <laughs> but I don't. I don't see a friends list or anything on there. It's, it seems pretty random. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. one of the but things that's the online game play elements. Then, I believe so. Yes. Helping each other fight bosses. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things I have seen that has been bashed uh, about this game is it's not cross-platform. Oh, is it not? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the online That's aspect, it's cross-gen, which I don't even okay, think yeah. that should be a thing. That's no no joke. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, it's yeah, it's not, it's not cross-platform or cross-progression which uh, is a big downside to Apex Legends in terms of cross-progression. But yeah. do you think it matters that much, being the interactions are what they are? So it's really just an, an individual game that you can bring people in if you need to. So is that cross-progression, is that, sorry, cross-platform uh, inability, is that actually an issue considering the dynamics of what you've explained? Like, I've, I don't I know. I've, imagine I've seen that a lot. I just, I'm not putting two and two together here based on what you've said. Well, from when I, you, when I have either gone into somebody else's world or been summoned or summoned somebody into my world, it's only for the duration of a battle and then they're gone. It doesn't, like, give you the option to stay. I've never had the option to stay and continue playing with somebody. As soon as we defeat an enemy, it, the game just takes you back to your world. So I can't imagine it would be too much of an issue only being able to invite P PlayStation players into my world and vice versa because, yeah, it's not like you can play with them for ages. 
it's very much a solo game, yeah. isn't it? It's a solo yeah. game, basically, yeah. with multiplayer yeah, with aspects, which is good. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. I like that as well, because yeah. if you if you are struggling yeah. at school, that you can bring people in. But 100%. I'm not... Uh, I, I feel like there's a lot of Karens about... Yeah, who are just, like, complaining about it. I agree i've seen a couple of complaints online which i will bring up in a second and ask laurie if she agrees but firstly i just want to say that this game currently has like a 98 percent on metacritic maybe it's 97 that's a pretty high it, rating i'd be happy with that it's insane so, now yeah please so on that do, are we believing these reviews? Like, I don't, I'm not yeah. trying to be conspiracy theorist, but no, no, no. every single review is like 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Yes, it's, it is. I, you know, I was just about to say that exact thing, Dan. I was just about to say I feel that people are afraid to not give it a 10. Afraid I feel- of what, though? Like, the nobody's hype, forcing them. The hype was so big. Everybody wanted to love it. People want it to be great. And I'm not saying it's not. I'm by no means saying, again, I haven't played it. I can't, I can't speak at all. Don't listen to what I have to say. I'm just wondering if that some of these reviewers are just, you know, they're, they're telling people what they want to hear. You know, maybe which ultimately gets more clicks. So I guess I get it. I mean, there's it seems like from what I have played of the game that it's a pretty flawless experience. There's nothing that like I've never experienced any graphical issues. I mean, I haven't played it for like 50 hours. Like, unfortunately, I have to work. So I haven't had the opportunity to play it for as long as I would like to. But I've played it for at least like eight hours and I've never noticed any graphical errors or anything like that. The only issues that I've had with the game are like my issues, you know, like dying a million times isn't the game's fault. That's my fault. And that's also kind of the point of the game. Mm -hmm. You can't like complain about it being hard because like it's kind of like the point is that it is hard. So maybe the reviews are kind of like, you know, like dogs with ugly faces. Uh, I've seen one or two. Yeah. This is what I think the 10 out of 10 reviews might be about. So the game was so anticipated for so long yeah. that the hardcore fans are going to love it no matter what. Even if you like Karen's will have the ugliest chihuahua that has eyes bulging out of its head or something like that, and they love that thing despite its ugliness. Like, they they can't tell. You know, love is blind. Love is blind. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, which is not how reviews should work. They should be. (laughs) Dogs with ugly faces. No, yeah. You should put that aside for reviews, in my opinion. You should say it has an ugly face. It is nice, but it's ugly. (laughs) Five out of ten. So I feel bad for Tom now. What's he doing there? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, clearly <laughs> clearly, love is blind for Laura, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, I'm just looking at Metacritic now. So it's 50 critic reviews make up a score of 97. 50. 97. There you go, it is, yeah. Yep, but the 97. user score is 7.6, and that's out of 2,150 ratings. Now, user oh, scores, <laughs> user scores I have an issue with. Yeah, so there's a couple of different – there's pros and cons about user scores. As Laura said, they're the ones you should be looking at because they're the real people that are playing the real game, but it can also be review bombed easily. That is so true, yeah. Mm-hmm. Trolls, and, trolling yes. the reviews. Exactly. So, yeah, that's what I was going to – That's what. look, it has to be, regardless of what critics say, mm. right, to so score 97 out of 50 critic reviews – it has to yeah, be it's decent. It's yeah. Not, oh, yeah. It, it, can't, it can't be rubbish and it can't just be because yeah. of hype from the plain point mm-hmm. of view of a critic doesn't want their review to mean nothing, uh, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So 
what would your personal score out of 10 be for Elden Ring? Ah, in this podcast, right? <laughs> Sorry, that's a <laughs> thinking sound, shouldn't I? Hmm. Yeah. I would rate it. I'm leaning towards like eight, eight point five, or eight point seven. Oh, a couple of points. Eight point eighty-seven out of hundred. Ah, uh, eight point nine. Eight eighty-nine out of a hundred. Eighty-nine yeah. out of a hundred. What makes up this score? I'd like, I'd like all the algorithms you use. Yeah. To come up with that score. What what were the algorithms you just used to come up with eighty nine? Well, I'm thinking about my experience with the game so far. <laughs> um, there's like I've had no, I haven't had any issues with anything. I beg to differ. What are your issues that you experienced while playing the game? I have watched Laura play the game, not for the whole eight hours or anything. I've got other things to do with my life, unfortunately. I would love to have, but I didn't. Uh, there was some asset pop-ins and pop-outs. Oh, you were you were looking in the background while I was like, yes. I'm dying, and yes. looking at the guy in front of me wailing on me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, there are some asset uh, yeah, drop-ins and drop-outs, uh, which is, is fine. It's an asset. I mean, I was playing Pokemon today, exactly, and yeah, that is, is massive. So it's, it's nothing like that, but it's not. It's not one hundred percent graphic fidelity. It's not a ninety-seven out of one hundred, you know. And also, I have seen quite a few things online about when you get too late game. Okay. Which Laura's not up to. Mm -hmm. uh, none of us can speak of this personally. But supposedly, it gets quite choppy. It gets oh. a little bit laggy. Frame rate start to drop. All the all of all of the issues basically then come in, and that is mostly in the second half of the game, if not exclusively second half. So, so overall, though, overall, Elden Ring, as opposed to. Uh, let's look at a couple of other heavy hitters, I guess we could say. What, what is the latest, biggest anticipated games that have come out before Elden Ring? So let, let's put Pokemon this in year. there. This mm -hmm. year? This year, half of last year. So let, let's let's go Halo Infinite. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah. Pokemon. Pokemon Horizon. Horizon, yep. Uh, Elden Ring, and what's another? What was Nintendo's? Um, what was their holiday, holiday release? Yeah, what was their holiday release? There's one. There's one more big one that I'm thinking of, and was it Shin Megami Forza? That came out at like the same time as Halo, didn't it? Or very close to? Uh, relatively close, but let's let's use them as examples. So yeah. <laughs> Pokemon, in my experience, was very choppy uh, in terms yep. of in in terms of graphics and blah. But like, I'm still struggling to find the wisps because they yep. come in too late for me. Um, I I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, about like Pokemon's performance isn't a hundred percent. No, no, it's oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So. Halo Infinite was okay, but it did have a couple of glitches. But still, for day one stuff, I think Halo Infinite was okay. I personally mm -hmm. don't think Pokemon was okay for a day one release. Oh, look, it was okay. It wasn't good. That's what I'll say. Okay, it's still a good game, but wasn't at the standard that I would prefer. Just uh, talking graphics here, guys, because that's like one. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm one not talking about all the... All, all the in-depth story stuff and and all let, let, just in terms of in terms I guess glitches. Let's look at glitches mm -hmm. because I I think and where I'm sort of going with this thought pattern is it just feels like it's been more and more acceptable to bring out a game with glitches. So I one 
patches are the bane of my existence. So and a uh, ten patches are worse, so uh, on and I, so forth. I don't have a huge issue with a day one patch if it's patching small stuff. Dude, because finish your game before you release it. Mm. Like yeah, stick well, the game on the disc that it's meant to be. You know what doesn't have day one patches? Books. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if they were like, oh, here's an extra page that comes with the book because just this, one, it in there. this one wasn't good enough. My God. It's like the – can you imagine if you went to Avengers Endgame and they just had a little snippet at the end where they're like, oh, actually, this scene was meant to be here. Sorry, guys. Patched. Nah. Nah. It's the only industry where this is acceptable. Mm-hmm. Sucks. You buy you buy your new Tesla. Oh, sorry, it, it comes with an extra wheel because one of them was. It's no good. You might <laughs> you might you might find it undrivable unless you download this new wheel. Well, te- <laughs> Tesla do have many software updates available for their vehicles. I was just thinking New World. New World came to mind uh, as yeah, one of those in- anticipated games that didn't go yeah. so smoothly. So what I'm basically getting at is, so I think uh, F- Forbidden West has been, I mean, you saw a couple of glitches when you went swimming mm-hmm. for too long, but not hugely game-breaking. A no. little bit more inconvenient than game-breaking. Yes. Halo Infinite, I saw a couple Again, not game breaking, and not enough that I would consider it a huge issue. If mm-hmm. we look at New World, that was a significant issue. That game, uh, Amazon weren't ready on their servers to to deal with that. Even Battlefield twenty forty two is that the one? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That's, up, that, up. that might even go free to play. It's from up. what I've. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So don't even bother if you're listening to this and are thinking about it. Just just buy Halo. Just just get Halo. Or just get Games Pass and yeah. play Halo. Better off, honestly. So your opinion then, versus all of those games, do you think Elden Ring has brought back that standard of you know, look, assets jumping in and out? I, I think based on the Cross generation issue, which I'm going to Ooh, say no. is no, no. PS4 version runs flawlessly. Of what? Oh, no, what I'm oh, trying oh. to what I'm trying to say yeah. is when they try and optimize it, because what I think they're doing is they build it for PS4 and they build it for Xbox One X, and then they're upping it for the PS5 and the Series X rather than having it built for those platforms is my understanding of what's going on. So Mm. either way, do you think Elden Ring has done, or from software, Bandai, uh, Namco, uh, they're all part of this, do you think they've done the right thing I know I'm going. I'm going on a very big tangent. But it's out. Come on, it's still out. Do you think they've done the right thing by the players this in this particular game? Because other it's games that we've mentioned, I'm trying to understand exactly what the question is that so I'm New being World, asked. I don't think I, I don't think they did the right thing by the players when they brought it out. I think it was. Because you don't experience. think the game was completely finished before they brought it out? Yeah. I think that this game is completely finished before they brought it out. I mean, I don't think I never had any glitches. Like I know that you had to like restart horizon. Yeah. I have played it for like a couple less hours, but I haven't had to do that. And I haven't, have you heard of any? No, 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 no. It's just the graph, the frame rates drops and those kind of things that I've heard of. So I would say that in that respect, I think that, yeah, it's been, there's no game breaking errors. I think the game was ready when they released it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it would want to be. They've been working, working on it for so long. Yeah, so absolutely, which is why it's had so much hype, hasn't mm-hmm. it? But yeah, I do think that 
I do think that. Um, I've the two times that I've played it, there has been up. Um, I've had to like upgrade it. There's update. been updates. Two updates, updates. Yeah. I've had two updates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I never experienced anything game breaking. I haven't heard of anyone experiencing anything game breaking. Yeah. So I would totally agree that the game was ready upon release. Good. Yeah. That's honestly should be how games are. And yeah, maybe that also contributes to the high ratings yeah. because maybe the sad reality is that people have gotten used to getting games that don't run perfect, like perfectly. We not we can't really say perfect, I guess, because there's been, you know, poppins, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But maybe people are used to game breaking glitches and massive, massive day one patches. Maybe that's contributing towards the high scores as well. Yeah, yeah possibly. I, mean, that I think critics didn't finish it and didn't get well, past that to that point. To the second half of the yeah. game when that stuff starts happening. That's entirely possible because yeah. I can only imagine that it's going to take me a really, really long time to get <laughs> even halfway through this game. Does it deserve 97? Yes or no? I think so. I mean, I would give it an – my. My yeah. score was 89, but I think it deserves a 97. I have absolutely no reason to disagree with it whatsoever. So is it game of the year? I think it could win game of the year, and I think that it might. I think it will. Mm. I, I think, think it, it will win game of the year. Mm -hmm. um, whether I'm not huge on Souls games. I just I, I, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. I'm just <laughs> dying is... But like, don't get me wrong. I don't like games easy, and I love a challenge. But it's just a it's bit... an extra challenge. Isn't yeah, it? it's not even that. It's just I don't know. I I get sick of doing the same thing over and over and over again so yeah. many times. Yeah. Um, and experiencing very little progression. And Elden Ring is different because it is open world. So maybe I will love this one. But in the past, yeah, Souls games—they're just not for me. Souls like that's old. The combat gets a bit old. You know, uh, Elden Ring has stuff like save points, which a lot of Souls games have not had, which is really nice. You don't have to run through the world for half an hour to just get back to where you died, which is very convenient. Mm -hmm. So there is a bunch of quality of life improvements. I think it probably deserves Game of the Year, despite all of my reservations of playing it. it it's, it's got a 97. You think it's an 89? I'm just playing devil's advocate here with asking about all these issues. Yeah, well, I reckon my score would might even be in the 90s if um, I had played a Souls game before and they were my favourite types of games because I'm kind of like you. They're yeah, not my favourite games in the world. Yeah. But I can definitely still give it a super high score because it's a really, really good game. Yeah, I don't think you should judge something on whether you love the genre or not. Anyways. Yes. Yeah, you know, exactly. You have to step, take a step back and say, you know, I don't like, I don't know, you might not like 2D platformers, but is it a really good 2D platformer? Yes. So it deserves a high score. Yeah. That, that, is, that is how people should be rating games. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to mention a fun fact quickly. When Horizon Zero Dawn released two weeks later, Breath of the Wild released, which went on to become Game of the Year. Now, Horizon Forbidden West was released, and one week later, Elden Ring has come out. Poor Horizon. Which is probably going to be Game of the Year. I'm so excited for what comes after the next Horizon. <laughs> so, what we good. That's it, isn't it? Just, just on that, in terms of uh, imminent or releases that have just come out, would be mm -hmm. uh, the Witch Queen DLC uh, for Destiny yep. 2. Now, the Destiny 2 series, every DLC is, like, the, the DLC is massive. It's it's like a whole other campaign yeah, it is. itself. Yeah, so, yeah, apparently, I sorry, yeah, I just want to say, apparently the Witch Queen is the best it has ever been. Mm. Big call. Dan, I know you're a big fan of Destiny. Have you played the Witch Queen? Not yet. It's, it's on my list. I've uh, been preoccupied. Uh, at this point in time. So 
I do want to jump back in, but a friend of mine that I usually play it with is unavailable at the moment. So I'm just I'm waiting for her to get um, get some things sorted out, and then we will uh, jump that, in and play this. Any What's that? Is that insanity? Yeah. Insanity yeah. has been on the podcast before, so some of you might be familiar with Insanity. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. Playing together is more fun. Yeah, well, totally. Destiny 2 sort of allows allows that collaboration sort of thing a lot more, which which I enjoy. So, And I've got other games that I can play. Majora's Mask just came out on the Nintendo Switch. Talk about repetitive. And, uh, yeah, I've been a little bit uh, in that. So, yeah. But I, I do want to play Witch Queen. I've heard good things. But back to my original point, otherwise I'm just going to keep rambling. Isn't it weird that you've got these three games, big games, realistically, all released at the same time? Dude, so the first, I want to discuss this in the podcast further at the mm. end of next, but the first three months of this year has just been go, go, go in terms of video game releases like there's so much stuff coming out in march even just like honestly it's insane it is just insane i'm a little bit overwhelmed (laughs) there's not enough time in the day no there is not uh yeah so that's interesting Mm. all right Elden ring done and dusted it's good it's really good yeah all right i'm glad i'm glad to hear that you like it i was a little bit worried when laura said she uh, wanted it, wanted to pick it up. You've said that a couple of times. I remember when I got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you said the same thing. Oh, I I was a bit worried that you wouldn't like it or that you'd find it difficult or something. I thought you would like Assassin's Creed. I just thought you would find Elden Ring ridiculously hard. It is. That's the point. Yeah. I mean, look, sometimes it's a little bit frustrating. I mean, that's why I opened with the, it made me want to rip it off and throw it into space Mm. because it kind of does. But then when you defeat that troll guy with his guts hanging out, it's really great. And then you find out that that wasn't even a boss and that was just like a regular guy. And you kind of wish that you could just grow another one so you could pull that off and throw it into space as well. But then you move on and you get to another. To another grace point and you're like woo it makes you you know happy that when when you are managed to progress and now i'm up to an actual boss so i guess that'll be me for the next two weeks <laughs> as long as it's rewarding it is rewarding once you it finish it matter. i think a lot of people got caught up in the hype of this game not expecting those things i mean it was all it was like before I got it, I knew it was meant to be hard. That makes it easier to accept because you knew if you know going into it that you're going to die a thousand times and it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're crap at games and you don't need to feel bad about it. It's kind of like the point of this game. Mm. You, yeah. It's one of those ones where you've got to die a thousand times so that you can recognize the attack patterns of your opponent and then you can learn how to avoid them, what your openings are, et cetera. Mm. It's not unfair. No, even though it kind of seemed like when I first started and I first came across that troll guy, I was like, surely this isn't right. <laughs> surely I've made a mistake somewhere and I've accidentally come across the final boss. But it's open world, so you don't have to, right? It is open world. That it? part you have to do to get to the to do the rest of the main story because he's like at the entrance to this place. Okay. Fair enough. Mm. Anyways, Elden Ring, anyone else got anything to add? I think that's it. No. Cool. All right. Let's move on to our next point of call. It's Pokemon's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pokemon. Woo. Or it was their birthday anyway. Yesterday. Yes. Yesterday as the recording, as of the recording of this podcast. Uh, There was a Pokemon Direct. We're going to go over a couple of things quickly and then the big news at the end because that's what what they did in their Pokemon Direct. So let's let's do that. Uh, We had a little release of Pokemon Go. I'm not still playing it. Uh, Are you still playing it? 
Pokemon Go. Yeah. Not since I arrived home from Japan. Mm. Dan, Pokemon Go. Maybe a year <laughs> ago, two years ago. Okay. So I feel like these updates. Oh, sword and do... Shield. Yeah. During Sword and Shield, one? because you can move Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Sword and Shield yep. to buy a, buy a certain Pokemon. Yep. So that brought me back into the game, but then they've removed a lot of that for Arceus. So uh, I have no interest. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, they have now released a whole new generation of Pokemon on their, uh, the seventh generation, the Alolan region. So, yeah, I mean, if you're fans of Sun and Moon, then maybe this is for you. I'm sure it will draw a lot of people back into the game. I know the play numbers go through the roof every time a new gen is released. You know, people want to catch them all. That is Pokemon's motto. I don't think it's enough to draw me back in. Maybe unless I was back in Japan where it is so fun and so huge. We live in a small town, so. You can't do raids with yeah. just like yourself. No, really. it sucks. So, but, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's good news. I'm, I'm happy for Pokemon Go. I, I love what it did. Mm -hmm. for I probably would still play it if we lived in a bigger place. Mm -hmm. uh, then there was the two and a half year anniversary of Pokemon Masters which I, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit I never played. It is a mobile game. I, yeah, I never played that one. Yeah, if we never played it, I highly doubt Dan ever played it. Yeah, no, I, is, I'm just a lot of huge like on mobile games. No. I, I Neither are we. Not, not when I've got Game Pass and uh, NVIDIA GeForce on my iPad and iPhone. I'm yeah. just not sure why yeah. I would. Yeah, I'm not that I've got anything against people that enjoy it. I just, if I've it's got five me. minutes, I'd prefer to smash out some Forza Horizon or something like that. To me, that's a five minute, pick it up for five or 10 minutes, play some Forza and then move on. So, yeah, I, I'm, what, what do you guys think of mobile games uh, as a whole? Pokemon Unite was okay. Um, I was going to say that, but that's, we played that on our Switch. Yeah, so did I. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's so the next I. point of, there is uh, some Pokemon Unite updates as well. So there's a whole bunch of dudes coming to Pokemon Unite. They're adding a special guy. What's his name? The ring guy. Duraludon. Oh, no. Sorry. The ring guy. Yeah. Um, Hoopa. Hoopa. That's it. Hooper is coming for free, yet is uh, you can play as him for free. And then if you do all the missions, you get to keep him permanently, which is pretty cool. They've shown a whole bunch of uh, Pokemon who are coming. We haven't played it for a while, so it turns out there's a whole bunch of Pokemon that have came already that we were like, oh, cool. You know, now we can now we can get this guy or that guy. So that that's pretty cool. I'm sure they'll put in like Arceus or somebody like that for Arceus eventually. I liked Pokemon Unite. I think that's... I loved that, that game. I thought that it was is great. probably the best of the... Uh, I guess you could just call it like smaller, mobile-y Pokemon titles. To uh, the Pokemon mobile games are like the only mobile games that I play besides um, Bloons Tower Defense 5. Yes, that is a very good mobile game. I that's the that. extent of my mobile gaming. I'm not a huge... I've never had a good enough phone to be able to... <laughs> play that good in mobile games you know Fair if i enough. had a hardcore phone like maybe i would put my um genshin impact file on there yeah fair enough or log into it yeah not download it but that's yeah i'm not a huge mobile gamer fair enough and then we had uh pokemon cafe mix which i'm not actually sorry cafe remix because they did a whole bunch of updates i'm not actually sure if this is on mobile or if it's just a Switch exclusive or what the go is here. With Pokemon Cafe Mix, yeah. Cafe I, Remix now. I would assume that it... I think it matters. Yeah. Dan, I Sorry, think sorry guys, you... you just froze then. I, I yeah, missed... so did you. Oh, okay, we all froze. So Pokemon yeah. Cafe uh, Remix... Remix, yes. ...is on... 
I had it and then I lost it. Switch app store for iPhone okay, and, yeah, it and is Google mobile. Play. So it is it is on it's mobile game. Cafe uh, I think you would be interested in this one, Dan, or not necessarily you, but maybe your young daughter, because it is a little bit of a kid's game. It is quite an accessible game. Let's put it that way. It's accessible, yeah. It is pretty fun, though. I've, I've yeah. given it a go. Yeah, I mean, it's not not fun. I played it for the for our um, free games video, mm-hmm. see if it deserved to go in there. Uh, it didn't, but it was still a fun experience that I enjoyed. It's very cute. The art style is, is very nice, would probably appeal. Uh, to a younger audience. So Dan, on it, yeah, you should you should give it to your daughter and, and and see if she likes it. She can do a whole review and then you can come back and let us know. Oh, that would be cute. There you go. There you go. Come back next week for Dan's daughter's review of Pokemon Cafe Remix. Done. So we'll see if the target audience is actually has been achieved, I guess, if that's if that's the right way of putting it. And, you know, there was, there's an addition to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I was like, ah, what is this? No, like, you know, they, they, they were good. They're great games. Don't get me wrong. Diamond and Pearl were fantastic. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I mean, they did nothing new. There's not a whole lot there for me. I felt like I might as well play the original ones. But, you know, they're, they're bringing a cute little Pokemon to those games. That's cool. And get a, get a Pokemon via Mystery Gift. But what we're all here for, what everybody wants to know about, what the internet is going cray-cray for, Pokemon Gen 9 was revealed. Mm-hmm. Mm, I just want to talk about this one for a wee bit. It did take me by surprise. I mean, I didn't really think that they were going to announce a whole new gen so close to the release of Arceus. I was a little disappointed. I was Sorry about that. thinking. That's my bad. No, no, all, all good. I, I was slightly disappointed from the point that I expected DLC for Arceus. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we skipped that. There was, there was a little some. bit. There was a bit of DLC for Arceus. Uh, some more trainer battles. Yeah. Dan, I know that you were disappointed that there wasn't a balls. whole lot of trainer battles. So yeah, that that was my big thing. I, I, I. So they have added that now. Yes, there is a bunch but, of bunch more trainer battles, so that's cool. But um, I felt it was surprise. I guess surprising is the right word. I thought there was just going to be like a massive DLC for Arceus. Like, and when I say massive, I mean like I, I for some like reason a whole other area. Yeah, I, I expected like another game almost inside of it. So, I thought it was too soon for that. Because Arceus has only been out for a month now, I think. So I I wasn't expecting that, but I know a lot of people were thinking something along those lines. Were you expecting I think a I'm whole expecting new Pokemon game? God. No, I don't know if anyone was expecting Gen I was 9. not expecting However, it. However, if history, like, you know, you can only predict the future by looking at history. Pokemon has a three-year cycle. They have had a three-year cycle for a long time, and it's bang on. Yeah, they are continuing with that three-year cycle. I just thought, with the amount of stuff that they were doing, in terms of all of these like mobile games that have been happening, like there's Pokemon Sleep now. There's Pokemon Brush Your Damn Teeth. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's Pokemon everything. It's insane. What are the, what is, yeah, I need yeah. to look them up. Is it just an alarm clock to okay. tell you to brush your teeth? I, uh, I don't know. It's not, it's not something I'm, I'm really want to get into right now. Anyways. Can we go but, back to a comment you made about the three year cycle? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting there. Oh, okay. I thought they wouldn't really, I thought they wouldn't stick to that because they're doing so many of these things. You know, Pokemon Unite. Pokemon Remix, all that jazz. Pokemon Smile, and Pokemon Rumble Rush, Pokemon Pass, see, Pokemon Trading see, Card Decks, Pokemon Quest, that, yeah. Pikachu Talk, Quest. Pokemon Playhouse. I'm, yeah. st- I'm heaps still going. Of Pokemon Magikarp Jump. Not all been released in the last three years, though. There is, you have 
mention some older games, but they've been doing a lot of stuff. For us. Diamond and Pearl remakes just happened. Uh, we know that that usually comes at the end of a generation, but there is usually like a bit of a gap between announcing a new one and the remakes coming out. And then, boom, we got Arceus, which is, uh, despite its flaws, probably the best Pokemon game of all time. Completely changed up the genre. Something beautiful, something different. Nice action adventure oriented style. I don't think anyone was expecting this. Mm-mm. Especially so soon. Yes, exactly. Exactly. The end of this year. Yep. Yep. Again, that sticks to the three year kind of cycle. So I, I, yeah, I guess it makes sense. If you predicted it like you, you had reason to, and we were wrong. So good on you. I, I just thought Arceus was that installment. I, I thought Arceus was going to delay that cycle by a good year. Mm-hmm. So they we're going to keep with so, that. And well, is this like the new Call of Duty where they release a new game every year, but it's half assed? Well, Arceus <laughs> is a spin off. Yeah. So I guess it does make sense that they would continue with the mainline yeah, games yeah. as they were because it's not. No, that's a Because it point. is a spin off title. Yeah. It's like Pokemon. Oh, sorry. New Pokemon Snap as well. That's a new one that released within the last three years. Uh, so it's, it's like that, or I don't know if we want to go back into the day, uh, Pokemon Coliseum, oh, yeah. uh, Mystery Dungeon, uh, all of those titles, they were just spin-offs in the midst of generations, which I'm a little bit worried about because, I mean, how long did it take us to get a Pokemon Snap sequel? Like 20 years, 15 years. A long time is the point. Uh, ne- ne- the Nintendo 64 was the first Pokemon Snap. We didn't get another one to the Switch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pokemon Coliseum, I th- was there two of those maybe? We had Gale of Darkness, so three, two or three? Can't Not remember. many. I'm still old, old yeah. school Pokemon Stadiums, my. Pokemon yeah. Stadiums, another one? Like my we only got We only got one or two of those. I really, really hope Pokemon Legends is not like that. I, yeah. want, I want one of those at least every three years, please. Yeah, I hope there's more of those too. Yep. And they've got plenty of opportunity to, like they could make one of those for every region. Yeah. Well, I mean, it looks like the Let's Go games has been off now. It seems to be getting less and less likely we're going to get another Let's Go. People thought Let's Go Johto. Yeah. That's, the, that's the second region. For those of you that don't know, that Pokemon Gen 2, Johto, it, it makes sense. It's catchy. It's a nice title. You, know, you could have had Togepi and Pichu as the mascots instead of Pikachu and Eevee. I think they're recognisable enough. I hope there's another Let's Go because I want to use that Pokeball that's ga- just yes. gathering dust. What is the point of that Pokeball? Yeah. I was, I was really cool th- for the game. I yeah, really enjoyed that one it. Game. Sure yeah. Be, yeah. I was sure that there would be another time that we would be able to use that. Unfortunately, not. It's because it's only got two buttons. We're actually discussing this today. Yeah, it's got two buttons. Like you have to have quite a simple game if you're only going to utilize two buttons. There's a reason controllers. Pokemon have lots. games are, in general, quite simple games. Yeah, but even like, if you look at uh, Arceus, yeah. like even just trying to find the journal. Yeah, dude, you you yeah but the, with that damn Pokemon. the mainline Pokemon games are quite simple. Arceus was so great because it deviated from that mm. formula. Yes, I agree. Yeah, but if we want more Arceus, less simplicity, that Pokeball Plus is gone. You know? Yeah. And we, and we do want, all want more Arceus, don't we? You want yes, the, we want, I yeah. do want more Arceus, Please but I tell- also want Pokeball. Yeah, but I don't want the game to suffer because they're trying to implement this little tool. They could technically right? implement the little tool if you used a one of the um, what are they called? Joy-Con in one hand and, and the, the Pokeball in the, the other. Oh, that's true. Yeah, mm. that would be interesting. I'd be, I'd be down for that. So yep. something could be, could be done with that for sure. No, no, I like that. Think I. 
I can think yep. outside the box. You're welcome, Game yeah. Freak. <laughs> balls in your court, yeah, Game Freak. Balls in your court. Yeah, so really, man, oh, I can't believe it's coming out this year. It I know. Yeah, that's insane. insane bit. Yeah, that's, it is really blindsided so many people. I think the best thing, and I'm sure most of most or most everyone will agree with me, this is open world. Mm, that's the most exciting thing about it. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it would. I remember saying, like, as soon as we watched the trailer, I was like, no, nah, it won't be open world. And this was before they, like, released more information about it. I was like, no, nah, there's no way. I was like, Arceus wasn't even. Mm. They never claimed it to be either, which no, gives me everybody, hope. Everybody just jumped on that. They did. Yeah. Bandwagon. It looked like it was going to be, but, mm-hmm. yeah, then it was like. But it wasn't. If they had claimed Arceus was open world and then they were saying this new Generation 9 was going to be, I would be a bit sceptical. Oh, yeah. Because Arceus wasn't. But mm. the fact that they never said that yeah, about no, Arceus, they didn't, yeah. but they're saying it about this one. That, well, if they're saying it, then it's going to be. That gives, I'm, I'm pretty excited for that. They can't say something and then not deliver on it. No. You mean That's like every big, game developer no. ever? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's cyberpunk. It works, you know, at least exactly 20%. What about this massive AI that they were going to have and then it was just like all the NPCs were just like, I don't know, weird. Not even there. Not Yeah, not even there. Yeah. Let's, yeah, so. Let's talk about the starters because yeah, I, that's that's a big conversation. So mm-hmm. we've got. Have we've got spaghetti who's the grass type? We've mm-hmm. got Finocchio yeah. who's the who's fire, and we've got Quaxley who I'm, I'm just making up random names by the way, guys. Uh, who's leave it water, Spaghetto, full coco, and Quaxley. Yes, we've got green cat, little foot, and Donald Duck. Little foot, yeah, I want to. I want to see. I can't remember what they look like. I remember the cat and the duck, but I can't remember what the fire one looks like. He's like a giant mouthed dinosaur guy. All oh, right. One, two. Mm. Uh, he's a dinosaur. He's like, he's, he's like a fat version of Totodile. Okay. Yeah, but fiery. Yeah, but fire. And maybe, maybe a bit cuter, like more like goofy looking. Yeah, right. Yeah. I just said little foot because he's the only dinosaur. Anyone he's else see little foot? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Land Before yeah. Time. Yeah, yeah classic. Rip yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so honestly, I watched those those movies like on repeat. Just, I met Laura and I still cried, dude. Oh, that first man. movie is so sad. It's just, you know. We're really if- showing our age here, guys. Uh, let's, yeah, go on, Dad, continue. So we got these three starters. Mm-hmm. Same as as always, grass, fire, water, which I, I think they need to stick to that. Don't deviate from the... I like it. The, I'm happy. Maybe the, with a spin-off, maybe something like Arceus, if they were going to introduce new Pokemon and do it that way, maybe they could have something different, like the whole psychic dark fighting that creates that perfect ring of mm. weak, resistant, weak, uh, weak, strong, sorry, weak, yeah. strong. That, that circle. Cool. That, I think. I think that would that would be okay. But no, I'm I'm happy with grass, fire, water. I like it. Uh, I always seem to gravitate towards the grass one. It's not an intentional move, but I always pick the grass one. Okay, I feel like Dan was going to ask that question. So, did you already answer it? What what one are you picking? Well, yeah, yeah. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. So you're going to pick spaghetti. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. What? How is it pronounced? Do we know yet, or is like sprigatito or something? Sprigatito. I I, I've, say, I've literally yeah, been hearing people over the last. When was Arceus released? Uh, three, I three don't months, know. Four Spirit months. Arta. Yeah. So I continue to hear people say it differently. So I, I was listening to something the other day, and he kept saying Arceus, Arceus, Arceus. And I was like, what the hell is he talking about? Because he never once said Pokemon. He just kept saying He's Arceus. Like, oh. He's like, you know, an Arceus where you, when you're flying and you're doing this? I was like, what the hell? What, 
Yeah. What, what game is he flying in? Uh, so, yeah, do, do we have the... Uh, do the we break have, down. Yeah. Do we, do we have how to say it yet? Or am I just... No, I'm, no. I'm, all right. So... I reckon I disagree on a lot of them. I reckon it's Sprigatito. Sprigatito. I, I agree. Sprigatito. Fwicoco and Quaxley. Yeah, Quaxley is obvious, but... Yeah, yeah, Quaxley. Fwicoco and yeah. Sprigatito. It's like Fwicoco, like a bit. It's like Fwicoco. Spriasho is how you would say this one. So, Fwicoco and Sprigatito, Sprigatito sound like pasta names. They... Uh, fun fact, the starters are almost always the same in every language because they're the starters. Mm. That's that's about it, though, as far so, as Pokemon goes. And Pikachu. So they want them to be, yeah, of course. So, Tom, who are you picking? Because I'm going to ask you first, sir, because I have a bit of a long-winded answer. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go with my long-winded answer first. So okay, cool. Like this, as as our uh, one of our lovely hosts just said, she is a huge fan of grass type starters. Now, I have an affinity to grass type starters myself, although it does sound strange considering the amount of times I do pick fire. But Bulbasaur, well, as thinking- an example, is one of my favourite Pokemon. Of all time, I even 3D printed myself a Bulbasaur pot plant, and I hate plants. Oh, cute. So <laughs> you hate plants? I hate them inside. I don't. I don't like plants inside. I, what am I, an animal? I don't want to live with plants. I come inside to get outside to go away from outside. I don't come inside to play with plants. To our house, Dan. I think uh, I've this, got like eighty plants. This podcast might be over now, guys. I yeah. think that was. I, the- I just have. I like, I'll kill it. That's there's no point in me having a plant. It'll die. So but Look after it. My God. No. But not so, too much. How, how does anyone trust you with a young child if you can't even keep a plant alive? Because I don't Plants want to keep the plant years. alive, whereas I want to keep my child alive. Very different. Oh, I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I, I, I do like the grass-type Pokemon quite yeah. a bit. Uh, I was a huge fan of the one that I can't think of right now, but which generation? Second gen. Um, she had the leaf on her head. I yeah. say she oh, yeah. in, the, in the series. It was a she. Uh, God damn it! Yep. Yeah. No, nah. I know who. At least I know who you're talking about. I know who you're yeah. talking about. It's in my mind. The one with the leaf. The dinosaur. So. Turtwig? No. Oh. That's Gen 4. Oh. Yeah. And see, Turtwig, another one that I liked. Yeah. I I really, really like Turtwig. So I've never been a fan of the water Pokemon, though. That's. Oh, really? No. I love. Mm. I always used to choose water. I was a Blastoise uh, or a Squirtle. I chose Totodile. Uh, I did choose Torchic in Gen 3, Gen 4. I chose Piplup, some Polyon. Uh, for, these are all my first playthroughs, by the way. I think I've literally chosen every starter of all time. Uh, Gen 5, I chose the little otter guy, Oshawott. Yeah, you are always a water guy. I chose Froki. I chose... Did I? No, I did not choose the little sea lion Pokemon in I the did. Alola region. That's one of the. I chose Rowlet there, and then in this latest one, I chose Grookey and Sword and Shield. So, so there you cool. go. Does Quaxley speak to you? Because personally, I'm mm, I, I'm probably going with Spaghetti. Yes. Uh, or Sprigatio, or Sprigasho, or Sprigatoni. I, I'm going with, with that one, I think. Uh, but I, I also haven't seen the evolutions yet. Let's, let's start a petition. Dan, you will have if you choose Sprigatado, Sprigatito, you have to name him Spaghetti. Done. You don't even need yep. to start a petition for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a petition. <laughs> this will be the first Pokemon ever that I have nicknamed, by the way. 
Yes. Yeah. I've I never, to, I'd, I've never, that. ever, ever nicknamed yeah. a Pokemon. I always. Yeah. One time I accident, I accidentally went in to do it, and I was, I selected yes, and I was like, crap. Oh, I don't actually want to name it, so I just named it like the name of the Pokemon, and then it evolved, and I was like. Oh. <laughs> you can't just press back and it gets out of it. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. thought it would be easier, but no. no. This was a long time ago, wasn't yeah. it? Last week. Yeah. And the course, worst part is if you tr- if you trade a Pokemon Pokemon home and put yeah. it in Sword and Shield, you are unable to change it if the yep. Bastardo on the other end changes trades you a nicknamed Pokemon. Yep. Mm-hmm. You are yeah, unable to change it. So the amount of Pokemon I've had to ditch because <laughs> I've got a nicknamed one, I release it. I don't want you. No, I, want, I agree. Yeah. I, I, so this will be the first one ever that I name and I will name it Spaghetti. That is, that's happening. You, the only ones I ever named is the ones that I played on stream. Because we name Pokemon True. after our followers, because it's funnier when they die and mess up. Come on, come on, low grade gamer, <laughs> what are you doing, mate? You should have easily beaten that Charizard. Buddy. I useless. But he Charizard. loves Charizard, so he useless. wouldn't have wanted to hurt him. Yes. Yeah, yes, I would let him win. That's why I thought you'd go for the fire type. Mm, that's yeah. what I was thinking. I was so tempted, but I, I've, I really like Bulbasaur. Bulbas- like I said, Bulbasaur. But the uh, the final evolution is what puts me off of Bulbasaur. I'm not a huge fan of Venusaur. I yep. think Venusaur, like, it, it, look, it, it looks cool, but, you know, even the mega evolution really put me off. Like, I don't want your, your flower yeah. got bigger. Good job, mate. So it's not as, none of the mega evolutions of those stuff. Well, how big's though. your flower, Dan? It's probably a conversation for a later time. <laughs> I'm but, sure if it if you mega evolve and it well, you didn't can't get bigger, judge you'd be someone upset. based on the size of their flower. That's that's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, good job. To, you're gonna have to put an R rating <laughs> for this one. So uh, I think over overall, because I, I also like um what's the Eevee grass evolution Eevee uh, leaf Leafion? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Leafion. A very cool design. I've, one of my favorite Pokemon ever. One of my favorite grass type. Yeah. And I don't know, spaghetti reminds me of, of Leafeon a little bit. So that's. Maybe that's why I like it. Spaghetti's so much. design is the most elegant, I would say. Uh, quite often, in fact, I think like almost always, except for seemingly the latest generation, uh, Sword and Shield, they always make one of the starters a little bit more feminine. Than the rest. So we had Pop Leo, the sea lion Pokemon in the Alola region. Before that, it was uh, Delphox. Oh, I so, love Delphox. So they're all they're just just a little bit of feminine vibes. That's all. Um, so I think Sprig- Sprigatato, Sprig- Spaghetti, so to say Spaghetti is going to be that. Just looking at her, her I see I'm already calling it her. Looking at their design, I think that that is going to be the case. Uh, I mean, you know, if I if I'm looking at uh, full Coco's design, he's going to be a bit derpy. But you know, who, who knows? Chikorita, yes. that's the one. Chikorita. Yeah. Sorry. See, Chikorita was also a little bit more feminine than the rest of the starters. Uh, it could just be me, though. I mean, you know, it's that's a pretty. A personal thing, isn't it? Very subjective. What's feminine? Yeah, what's not. Is I, I, I don't know. I sort of think the same. I think they do go down I, that I got line. The same vibe. So, and they yeah. also, I feel like they also push that home a little bit in the series, and that's yeah, start to uh, start to do that. I mean, they didn't do it with first gen though. No, so, yeah, I was going to bring that up. That the first gen yeah. ones are quite neutral. They, yes, they, sort of they are quite neutral. from. Um, from that second generation, where yep. they made even yeah, though chip- like third third generation, like Sceptile, Blaziken, and Swampert, they're all like pretty. I mean, okay, 
you know, Blazer can accept are like agile, where Swamp Hurt's like a big burly kind of one. But that I, I don't know. None of them are overly feminine to me. Anyways, ask me what I'm going to choose as my starter. What are you going to choose? <laughs> Took you guys long enough. Come on. <laughs> well, I think we were both waiting for each other yeah. and then we just went at the same time. So the short version of my long-winded answer is it's too early to tell. You only have the starter Pokemon for not very long, between 14 and 16 levels, which you go through quite fast at the start of the game. If you haven't evolved your starter by the second gym usually, Definitely the third. So not much. Not much of your game is spent with that little guy. They will evolve quite soon. So I don't care. I don't care if my first little guy is ugly. I don't care if Quaxley is the worst design out of the three starters. If his final evolution is the best, Mm -hmm. then I'm choosing Quaxley, man. Yeah, well, that's the one you're stuck with most. Yeah, exactly. It all hinges on the final evolution. It really hinges on the final evolution. I wonder when they'll be released. Like the, uh, it was the grass started to evolve. Nah, nah, that's dumb. That's stupid. Honestly, who does that? That's stupid. It's not Pikachu. That's not even a point. Yeah, we're not Ash Ketchum here, guys. Like, you should evolve Pikachu. Like, Raichu is better. I used to give Bulbasaur the Everstone. Ah, uh, cute. No, dumb. Because you thought Venusaur's flower was too small. No fear. Too big, apparently. He likes <laughs> the small flowers. Bulbasaur's got the smaller flower. It's more Dan style. <laughs> Speaks to him. <laughs> he relates. Sorry, Dan. So you walked into Re- that. More relatable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it is the final evolution that it all based off. Also, I'm a big, like, type person. So if a Pokemon is a steel type, I will na- just naturally gravitate towards that rather than if it's a, a rock type because I think steel is a cool type. I, I don't know why. I think that's a, a childhood thing. I just decided that steel was cool and I like metal stuff and I like metal Pokemon. Uh, it's the same for ghost type Pokemon. For those of you watching, I am currently wearing a ghastly Gengar Haunter shirt. Uh, it's a nice purple shirt. I like ghost Pokemon. They are- And purple. And purple. Yes, that, that is true. It's my favorite color. It's a nice color. So- if and so what I'm saying is if any of these Pokemon end up as a ghost type or a steel type, I, I, I'm, pr- I'm probably going to go them. It's the whole, it's literally the whole reason why I chose Cyndaquil in Legends Arceus is because it evolves into a fire ghost. I like ghosts. I went with Cyndaquil. So yeah, it's way too early to tell. Even when the designs are out, maybe I, maybe I won't decide. I've made this mistake before. I in generation five, so po- no, six, Pokemon X and Y, they released the starters and I was like, awesome. I'm definitely going with that cute little grass guy, Chespin. Mm. He was cute. So they had Froki, they had Chespin, and they had Fennekin. And I was like, Chespin is awesome. He's a cute little mammal, which was really new for grass types at the time. They're usually all like um, some kind of... Uh, cold-blooded creature, I guess you could say. You know, snakes, dinosaurs, that that type of thing. And yeah, Chespin was like warm and fuzzy and cute. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm going him. And then they released the metal evolutions. And Qualadin, his metal evolution is like honestly the ugliest thing you'll ever see. He's the worst starter evolution of anything. Middle evolutions, final evolutions. Like he's the worst. He's the ugliest. And I was like. Yeah, cool. I'm not going him anymore. And he was a little bit redeemed with his last, his final evolution. It is pretty cool. You know, grass fighting. That's pretty cool typing. I like that. But it just, yeah. Again, I made that mistake. I've been burned once. You know, you've got to learn from your mistakes. So I refuse to choose. Fair enough. If you ask me what the best design is, who I think is the coolest out of the starters. Yeah. I think... Spaghetti yeah. is the coolest, 100%. Yeah, spaghetti I, is the I coolest. I like cats, so cats are cool. 
But yeah, I, I can't tell you what I'm going to decide. I am so excited for just new Pokemon, man. I know. The, the coolest thing about Pokemon games for me is new Pokemon designs. I love those little guys. They, it's so exciting. I love them. I love catching new ones. I think I mentioned to Laura, my entire team in Arceus is new Pokemon designs. And that's that's just what I do. I never catch old Pokemon. I'm just about the new guys. Mm. I just I wanna- love seeing the new ones rather than like regional variants. Like they're cool, but like a new Pokemon. Yeah, is cooler. Uh, regional variants pretty cool. Yeah, no, nah, they're like a nice middle ground. Mm-hmm. It's not quite the old. It's not quite as exciting as yeah. a new one, though, is it? But I'm, I'm willing to give it. Sorry, so I guess I should say in Arceus, I went with the regional variants. Yeah, there weren't none of them were new. They're all just variants. So new designs, yes. I guess, is what I meant. Yeah. So I'd, so, I'd just go with Gen 1. Yeah. I, I know that about you. I just ben. did everything else. Yep. He has six Charizards in his team. Yeah. So my Pokemon uh, Shield <laughs> team, three Shinies, three Stan. you need to move, dude. <laughs> you need to move on. Yeah. It's, we've been It's happened. That was like. God damn it, like 30 years ago now, dude. So, like, I, I have think a question. We need... What? Is you Charizard going to be in this game? Oh, if it's not, I'm not even going to pick it up. But, good. Arceus. Yeah, Frank, if you don't need that sale. Yeah, well, I get it. Arceus. Sort of man- what three things yeah. would you want the new. Pokemon games to take from Arceus, other than the obvious open world stuff, blah, blah, blah. What three things do you want them to bring across? So I just want to say, firstly, there has to be a distinction between Arceus and these mainline Pokemon games, the first yeah. games of Gen Y. Just like, so a lot of people are saying, oh, Arceus was the tester for the open world. No, it wasn't. The tester for the whole open world design was the wild areas in Sword and Shield and then the DLC. They, they were the real testing of the waters. Arceus, again, is a spin-off. So there has to be distinctions. I don't think there's going to be anywhere near as much of those action-adventure kind of elements, the stealth elements, the ball-throwing, none of that. None of that's going to be in it. Uh what as far as what I hope to see, I hope there will be some grown-up elements. Uh, I don't I don't want to get into any spoilers or anything, but the uh, the end of the game in Arceus is quite intense, and your character gets quite stressed out. Let me say, I hope there's more of that. I hope there's more character development. I really I really hated some characters in legend i and and at the same time i really loved some of them as well whereas pokemon it's, they've always played it safe people are just very vanilla you know like the latest the champion of sword and shield uh, he wore he wore a cool cape but like did he really have that much of a personality he was just bubbly like the rest of pokemon you know eh eh that's okay. So I hope there is some character development, like actually getting invested in some of them. I hope there's some more mature themes like they have with the old, you know, basically colonialism that's happening in Legends. And it's not really a legend specific thing, but I think we will get a new mechanic of some kind in terms of battling. So we had Mega Revolutions, then we had Z-Moves, then we had Gigantamaxing. There's going to be something along those lines. I want there to be more Mega Revolutions. I think the whole community wants more Mega Revolutions because those things are cool. They are cool. Unfortunately, I think they're done. Let's be honest. Out of Gigantamaxing, Z-Moves, and Mega Revolutions. Mega Revolutions were the coolest for sure. Easily. By a long... I don't care if my Pokemon gets big. <laughs> That's crap. It changes form a little bit sometimes. Some yes, yeah, sometimes some of them uh, don't. 
Or it depends if they're Dynamax or Gigantamax. That's that's exactly. yeah, yeah. Uh, eh. And then you have to catch a special one that's capable of dying. Nah, nah. I just want a Mega Revolver. That's cool. That's cool. I want more of that. Yeah. So they're the three things for me. If I can't have that, more regional variants. They're also cool. Give us Charizard, but give us something different. You know, give us a give us a water Charizard. That'd that would be, be nice. awesome. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I hope that they'll still have like side quests to an extent in the Ooh. new game. I think that would be cool. Like not the Pokedex entries, but maybe like NPCs in the world needing, I don't know, certain Pokemon for certain things. And then mm. you get, I don't know, some like sick ass items or something. Mm-hmm. That would be really cool. Highly agree with that. I do hope that you have to throw the ball in some way, shape, or form, whether it's just like with a button or not. I really enjoy the aspect of physically throwing the ball yourself. Do you mean like Arceus, where you sneak up on Pokemon and like not battle them? No, like maybe, I don't know, maybe after the battle's done, maybe the whole like battling thing in. That kind of stuff is the same as the normal mainline Pokemon games, but I don't know. I just want to go like that. Makes it feel more. So you, that's not realistic. So you want the let's go of throwing. Because in Arceus, you don't actually, like, it doesn't have motion controls. Yeah, but it's like a little bit more similar, I feel, isn't it? Like, you've got to aim it. You've got to aim the joystick so that it's going to actually hit the Pokemon and then you've got to throw it at it. Yeah. It's not just like you go into your bag and then you select Pokeball and then it does it. Okay. Yep. So maybe not motion controls, but maybe you've got to aim your ball or something. I don't know. I just really like that aspect. It makes it feel more. So you want to aim. Really your ball. You want to aim your ball while you're actually in the interaction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I, that's a cool aspect that it would be awesome if they brought that into Gen Nine as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the third one? Yeah, you've got one more. I do. Well, I do hope that they'll still have Pokemon that you can use to traverse the open world that they're going to have. Like how you have um, Sneasel that climbs up the mountains and stuff. I, I hope that they still have something like that. And it's not like Diamond and Pearl where a random Bidoof pops out of nowhere. Oh, that was dumb. Yeah. I hated that. I hope that they bring the actual Pokemon who are capable of doing the things that they're actually going to be doing, and then you can move up the mountain yourself. Mm. I like that. But no HMs? Um, HMs, yeah. Well, there's, I don't hate HMs because usually they're not bad moves in themselves, mm. and then you can choose what Pokemon does it. Cut so I, sucks. Yeah, cut, okay, cut sucks. But, like, waterfall's a good move. Yeah, yeah. Fly is a good move. Yeah. Strength isn't bad. Yeah, exactly. They're but usually pretty good. Cut, so, I wouldn't, flash, I wouldn't mind if they had the HMs because yeah. then you're able to choose what Pokemon you use to traverse the area. So, actually, yeah, I think that would be cool. Yeah. If you could choose your own, you don't – it doesn't always have to be this random Sneasel that isn't even yours. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that would be very cool if yeah, they could work yeah. out with sprites. Yeah. That's and my hope. Only certain sprites are capable of getting up a cliff. Yes. Yeah, that would be that would be very yep. All right, cool. High risk game freak. <laughs> yeah. Dan, what about you? What three things do you want? So what I really enjoyed about Arceus was the fact that I didn't have to get into a full on battle to catch Pokemon that I was mm-hmm. just trying to catch to complete my decks. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're gonna do in Pokemon. You want to complete your Pokedex in most cases. So I like the fact that it didn't turn into this whole thing where this writing scrolls across the screen, this happens, this happens. You just throw the ball. Just throw mm. the ball, the bastard gets in there, and you move on. <laughs> I really like I'd, that aspect. I'd be disappointed. I will be. I know. Yeah. I, I think you – I think. That's going to be one of those distinctions that I was talking about, how Legends is this spinoff and they're going to keep this very much uh, at turn-based battles. You go in there, but just in an open world setting. It's just more with catching them. It's just like... like yes, like, it does make... I lo- Don't get me wrong. I love it too. I'm all for yeah. it. But I think they're going to try to... It's going to be one of the distinctions. What I uh, also liked 
in Arceus, but I also didn't like was basically exactly what you were just talking about, is using the the Pokemon to you know get around the get around the world, which is uh-huh. cool. What I didn't like is I wasn't using my Pokemon to get around the world. I was playing a flute, the same tune, and for some yeah, reason, a particular Pokemon just knew it needed to rock up. So, and, you know, they had, like, why, why the hell did the, whatever it's called, the fish Pokemon, why, like, why, am I, why does it look like I'm riding a motorbike? Why has he got that on him? I don't, a saddle. Yeah, why has fish- Sneasel got a box like that? Oh, I like that, though. It was like Demon Slayer. But, yeah, it was. It's, yeah, I like that. It's Eyes. a cool aspect, but at the same time, <laughs> what's it doing? It was weird, but I I I thought it was funny. Like, I mean, from a child perspective, think about it like you know, you're riding a horse, you're getting onto the saddle of the horse, like you're getting onto the saddle which of. It all makes sense, but this is Pokemon. It's like juice on my butt. Let's. Good, good to know. <laughs> Arceus was before these Pokemon were domesticated. Yeah. So why is a child having a saddle or? a box on the back anyway that's that's not my point my point is i'd like the hm stuff to happen even Mm -hmm. if the hm was potentially a separate move that you couldn't use in battle but the pokemon knew so for example you could tear whether yeah whether it was a battle move or whether it was not that that would be that would be cool and uh, using my own pokemon to do those things though even if they set it to like Say okay, ten Pokemon can fly and lift you up because that Pokemon has the strength to do so. You know, like you can't use explain it. Okay. You, you, yeah, you like you can't use Pidgey to fly. You can only yeah. use the Pidgeot or a Charizard, definitely. A Charizard. And that would help them with their sprite rendering as well. They wouldn't have to put you know literally every fly, flying type Pokemon there as as the mm. sprite that's lifting you up they could yeah. just yeah animate 10 of them it would be yeah. fine so i uh, like i'd like that and so those those are my two things the third thing that i liked a lot a lot a lot a lot because the the one thing that i hated through each generation is my trading ability is limited right unless i'm using uh, pokemon home yes. Pokemon Go, uh, and those sorts of things. My, my trading ability is limited. So what I did like in Arceus is I, I did like the linking cable. I did like yes. the fact that you could catch these Pokemon in the overworld, but I don't want that. What I'd like is once you've finished the game, I'd like to be able to get the starters. Um, oh, yeah. So the yeah. other two starters, like they did in Arceus, I'd like to get them again because at the same time, Pokemon's a social game. So I think removing the fact that you need to do those trades all together, uh, I no, think... No, it's not a I, Yeah, I, I just... I don't think it's the right move. But getting those starters towards the end of the game or at the end of the game... Would be really would be really cool. So the last two starters are available. You know, you, you get Finocchio and you get Quaxley. Yeah, like that that would be so after a mission, bit of post game content. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. So and then you know you could evolve like, them at, at that point and and do that. That that would be those those are the three things that I'd like. I mean, the first I'm definitely not going to get. No, I, I agree. Yeah, for me, I really hate getting into a Pokemon battle that is just a waste of time. Like, if you've got a level 100 Charizard and mm-hmm. all of a sudden a Caterpie or a Wormpool, whatever the whatever that new one is in the Arceus, what's well, not new, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, and it's level two. It's just like, it's, it's just stupid. Yeah, so I don't you just think, feel bad, eh? I don't think there's going to be random encounters unless it's like a sword and shield where there was like some special Pokemon that would like rustle through the grass you couldn't see or whatever it was. And then you, yeah, so well, they might go through it again, which no, is. I think it'll be very sword like, and shield like. 
Yeah, like going back to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl with the random encounters was just honestly, it was it was just a pain. Like mm. we've we've done that, and if you're going to do it again, at least you know have with all these remakes and remasters coming out of all these old games, they have options to turn that off. Turn off random encounters when I I forgot to pick up a potion from the shop and I got to run back, but I'm going to encounter ten Pokemon along the way. Like, oh my god, give me yeah, a break! If they bring back random encounters. I won't play the game. But yeah, no, nah, I, I really don't think there's so at least nowadays in Pokemon you don't just have to blindly stumble around the grass and fight ten Pokemon to find the one you're looking for. You yeah, can. It's, it's more at that- least two you're going to fight. Yeah, like if you have to catch one of those Pokemon, because I, I like do I like completing the decks at the end because it gives yep. me post game content. So I I not necessarily avoid catching Pokemon. It's just I just don't make it a, a big thing before I finish the game because then I can go back through and and I you know, still can do bits and pieces after I finish the main content. So for me, that's that's a big aspect. I like that. And I also like that you can use Pokemon Home in Sword and Shield. You can't use it in Arceus to complete your decks. I think that was a that was a very, very good thing because it allowed for community involvement still and engaging. I mean, they did really need to up their game in terms of dodgy Pokemon that do go in there. And they need to do a significantly better job of working that out. But as a whole, I think those three things, if they were to bring them to the mainline series, they would be the icing on the cake. Because, again, I I very much dislike having to battle a Pokemon that is level two. I just want to throw the ball at it. I don't have Mm. any interest. And, you know, that's just the way I play as well. Like, I'm not catching those Pokemon like other people would when they're progressing through the story, they're trying to complete their decks at the same time. I'm just trying to give myself as much post game content as I can, if that makes sense. So it's, so it's kind of a personal gripe anyway. I can, yeah, so it's, it's look, at, in, at, but what it is. Yeah, no, 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 it is. But so sword and shield is an example. What, I like and didn't like is the fact that in shield I had to go in post game and change all the settings to avoid all the bull stuff that I didn't want to look at or do. So scrolling text was set to very fast animations was removed and all those other yep. facts. But yep. I've been doing that in Pokemon games for a while now. Yes. I, I, but then there's sometimes I'll, I'll when you want on. the animation. Yeah, because this new move that's never been done before, it's sort of a specific move that only one Pokemon can learn you want to see. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I struggle with that as well. So that's that's but- my – I can't handle repetitive tasks too often. Like that – I I yeah, I, I want to do – if I'm playing the game, <laughs> what's that? Pokemon is not the game for you. No, but at the same time, you are catching different Pokemon and, and sometimes yeah. you've got to do things to catch those Pokemon in a different way. Like in Pokemon Sword and Shield, what I really liked is the fact that the Pokemon basically leveled up with you, if that makes sense. So you didn't end up I the EXP share. I don't mind the EXP share. I like it as well, but I know it is controversial. No, mm, no it not, is controversial, yeah. I know not everyone likes it. No, I mean, like, when you're in the wild area, the Pokemon were were level 60. Once you got to, once you post-gamed, there. Yes, that's because, um, like, once you got Surf or Waterfall, you could access different areas in the wild area Hmm. where the Pokemon were stronger. So, Uh, So that actually leads us to a very interesting point, which I've been wanting to ask. We are running a little bit over time, but it is to be discussed. How are they going to make this open world? What are they going to do? How How is the gym battles going to work? How is stuff like Pokemon levels going to work? I think they, they'll probably just be a gym in each, like, maybe 
corner or whatever. I think like open world, there'll still be the gyms like in the open world, but maybe you don't have to do them in order or something if you don't want to. I yeah. don't know. That was my question. Is yeah. that is that what's going to happen? They're not in order? Maybe. You beat gyms. Okay, so they're in- Or maybe it'll be like, because sometimes like when you have open world games, like you're allowed to go wherever you want, but sometimes it's not recommended. Like maybe you'll go into this area where all of the Pokemon and or enemies are like way over leveled and you're like, oh, maybe I'll do this part later. So that you think they'll direct you to certain areas? Yeah, I think mm. Pokemon is very much a directional game still. So I, I completely agree. I think what it'll be is like you can go over there if you want. I wouldn't do it, but you can. Yes, and just yeah. See, what or maybe you go and you get there, and then you and then you're like, oh, okay, maybe I'll come here later. Mm-hmm. I think they'll have areas like that. But I hope they don't. I think there will be some, like so. What I in an ideal world, it's gonna be Breath of the Wild, right? It's gonna be you can go anywhere and everywhere, and there are a few select like bosses and areas that you can do. Hell's yeah, you can kill a a guardian on you know with one heart or three hearts or whatever it is. But you just don't have the skill to do that. Yet. Yeah, you know you don't have that. Because it is it is doable, but but what is like it's it's just really hard. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I think it'll be I, like. I think Zelda I was, is a lot easier to do it in those than Pokemon. Yeah, because because of the levels of Pokemon, I don't that's, think that's going to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, but I would like yeah. it. So that there's some areas. I just don't want it to be. It's open world, but you have to go to this place and then to this place and then to this place in a specific order. I want it to be everything available to me. And okay, make specific areas off limits. Like I haven't got surf yet. Okay, I can't go to this small island where maybe, you know, the fifth gym is or whatever. Do it like that. But I really want all of the Pokemon in the overworld to level up with me. I don't want them to just be, there's level two Pokemon in this area. There's level 100 Pokemon in this area. I want all of them... Yeah, to, to grow with me. Mm. Pokemon is finally starting to grow with this audience. Make the actual Pokemon do that too, please. See, I think that's I hard from the evolution point of view because you then... Or, that's or, all right. You can, have a level, you can have a level 90 Charmander. Why not? Can you have a level 2 Charizard? Mm, no. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, it's a balancing act. They're going to have to, they're, they're going to, have to come up with some sort of balancing act. Because, I mean, Breath of the Wild, and we speak about it a lot on this podcast, but Breath of the Wild, you can just go straight to Ganondorf or Kalani, uh-huh. whatever his name is. Yeah. You can just go straight there, and people do it, and they win. I don't know how. Same. Yeah, I don't know how either. That's awesome. But they do it. Practice. It's possible. So being able to do that would be cool. I mean, you'll mm-hmm. buy but you know, like with the with the first generation, just going straight to the big old Giovanni and taking a crack and getting your mm. ass kicked, that would be good. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, I'd prefer to be able to go there and get smashed. Not, yeah, mm. than not, not be have able that opportunity at all. So mm. I, I, think I yeah, that, yeah. As long as they, it's a really hard balancing act with Pokemon because they have levels. If they didn't yeah. have levels, I, it wouldn't be, you know, because realistically, Zelda is more skill based than, it is. than really I mean, yeah, you get stronger swords and you get this, you get that. But in Zelda, you can use your wit to outwit the opponent or come up with a solution. Sorry, that's- just, just paused for a second. We uh, missed that. In Zelda, you can basically you know, outwit your opponent or come up with a different way of, you know, beating an enemy. I'm playing Mm -hmm. uh, Elder Scrolls at the moment, as an example, and it's a bit of a glitch, I guess. Not really a glitch. You got to kill a mammoth at one point, 
right? There's mammoths in this game. And Mm -hmm. I am not at a stage where I can kill a mammoth. But I went and I got like 200 arrows and I made sure that the NPC was dumb enough that it would just continue to try and walk into a rock every time I shot an arrow. So I cornered it because of my amazing intelligence. I I cornered this mammoth in a position where it was trying to get to me, but it couldn't. And every time it realised, the NPC realised it and then tried to go around, as long as you shot it in the ass at the right time, it would turn around. Mm. So that's the sort of thing that I think is absolutely impossible with Pokemon because yes. no, I agree. Because of the as I, was, I knew it was impossible, but it but would be nice. I agree. It would be nice. Would be nice exactly. yeah. Okay, what about just the gyms then? Give us the gyms in any order, and just have them. At the first one you beat, they're all at level ten, and then yes, all of a sudden, they could then, do that. Maybe and they all got jump up to level twenty. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they or, could do that. Already. Yeah, or they just have bits of uh, different team. You know, depending on how many gyms you've beaten before them. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I think that makes that sense. Makes mm-hmm. Or yeah. they use different Pokemon. Why do gym leaders yeah, only, yeah. only able to have two Pokemon? They have a different team depending on your level. Yeah, so that I think yeah. would be absolutely like, like that to me would make more sense yeah. gym wise. Right, so if you go to a gym and your Pokemon, let's let's look at the Pokemon world. Yeah, you go to a gym and you you live in Cerulean City. Why would yep. you go all the way to Pewter City to then come back to go to Cerulean City Gym? Like none of that made yes. much. Let sense. me beat the gym in any. Yeah, so any it's like okay, can I please instruct sure. your Pokemon? What level are your Pokemon at? Okay, Pikachu's at level 45. Boom. Now you've got to verse Steelix and Gollum. Boom. Yeah. Mm. Boom. Yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. Or your Pokemon's, you've got a bloody Caterpie and he's useless. He's level two. You verse Geodude and Onyx. Yes. Yeah, 100%. That is, I'm total. that's what I want. That is I my hope. I just fixed Pokemon. You're welcome. I'll, just, I'll be going. <laughs> I think that's what they're going to go for. They're going to give us something like that. I'm excited to see what it's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is all just speculation. Mm -hmm. So what's not speculation, though, is they will not have. I don't, yeah. I'm I'm sorry, all you purists who want to complete or you want to catch all. Oh, this is going to make it over a thousand Pokemon this gen. Just a quick one, guys. Just not happening. You, you just yep. froze up for a good long minute there. So what I think you said was then you're not going to be able to catch every Pokemon. Yeah, no. not every Pokemon that's ever been created in the world. No, there's, they're not going to – this generation is going to give you a 1,000, make it over a 1,000. They're, they're just not implementing a 1,000 sprites into an open world game. It's just not going to happen. I'm really sorry if you're upset that Sword and Shield took that away from you and maybe your favourite Pokemon wasn't in there because everyone's favourite. Someone, someone, there is a Pokemon for everyone. Some Pokemon is someone's favourite. Every single one. Even if it's the ugliest thing you've ever seen. Even if its name is Per Ugly, guarantee you that's someone's favourite Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry if it's not there, but it's, it's just not, man. It's just not going to happen. There is not going to be over a thousand Pokemon in this game. Yep, I agree. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Dan. I know that's you, but it's just not going to happen, dude. <laughs> no, look. I think I I actually agree with with the generation type games and the way they've got them. I don't think you should have every Pokemon in it. What would be cool though is if, say, they gave you an allowance, right? Mm. Because this isn't that hard to developmental wise because i checked before this just so we know Mm -hmm. 
uh, actually it was based on a conversation that we had a little while ago and I actually spoke to somebody about this. So what they could technically do if they wanted to is make every single Pokemon available, but uh-huh. through different channels. So what I mean by that is, say, have the core 300. Okay, so you've uh-huh. got 300 Pokemon that you need to catch to complete your decks. And then they could technically go, okay, what we're going to do is Pokemon outside of that, you can still bring in, which they sort of did in Sword and Shield, you can bring in, say, 100 Pokemon of your choosing. From previous games. From previous games through Pokemon Home. Okay. Pretty much through Pokemon Home. That's the only way they're going to be able to do it. So bring those Pokemon in through Pokemon Home, but their moves, et cetera, and the way they interact are potentially, say, from Sword and Shield. Yeah, they're all limited. So, they're yeah, they're, they're limited in the way. So, for example, if Quaxley has an awesome water gun move and he jumps around, he flips in the damn air and... You know, he shoots water down and they make it look really cinematic and cool, which to me is that's what I want to see more of, like they did in yeah, But then you brought in a Blastoise. You traded in a Blastoise from Pokemon Home, but it is not a technically supported Pokemon because it is from previous generation. Then Blastoise would just shoot water from whatever's going. Yeah, he would just stand there and water would come out. Yeah. So Yeah. Okay. That, I'd be happy that, with that. I think would be a decent compromise because Whatever. I think I think you're right. With the main line games and the way they work, the idea is to complete the Pokedex from Pokemon A and, and B, right? Red or blue, whatever, whatever the generations are. Your goal is to complete that Pokedex, not catch all one thousand Pokemon. But if they make them available through those other channels and limit it at 100 or whatever the game can actually handle, right? Mm-hmm. So there's no point in making it 1,000. So, yep, you can bring in every single Pokemon that you've ever got. They won't count towards your decks, but you can bring them in, but the game can't handle it. That's crap. It's a waste of time. I don't want to do that anyway. And at the end of the day, I can't use 1,000 Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can only use six at a time realistically, and most of the time they're just six Charizards. So (laughs) I just really want Charizard. That's that's my thing. That's what I want. Yeah, fair enough. We all want different things, unfortunately. I just want Charizard. Yeah, I can't wait to see more about this game because it's going to be so different to yeah. One game before, so I can't wait to see what they're going to do with it. But we won't know until then. I no. hope it's a mashup. I really hope it's got a mix of Arceus in it. But I, I don't think it will either. Didn't catch that. You froze again. The connection's getting a little bad. It is very stormy here in Australia today, so yes. everyone knows that's Especially- why. A bunch of silences. But there's, I don't know. If heard of the thunder here. We've got thunder too. Yeah. As, as this has been recording, which yeah. I guess seems like a good excuse to uh, end it there before we uh, well, all lose been, power. Yeah, it's been long enough now. Anyway, hasn't it? Oh <laughs> yeah, I think it's been a decent, decently long one this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told you we could talk about these things for ten hours of pop. We could, we could keep going, but sadly the weather. Is not allowing it today. Oh, I think it's just been too long. <laughs> well, is is anyone want to add anything about Pokemon before we go? I think we've um, been through most of it. Mm. I'll let you talk. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge. Sure. I actually really like Haunter. Haunter is actually my favourite. Yeah, he's. And I make sure to- you go out on YouTube to see my top. If you haven't, if you're yes. listening to this, there's a will be on YouTube, some low grade gamers, and you can see my awesome Gengar Haunter shirt. I've got I've got a different idea. Mm. I reckon we add you into the thumbnail of this week's 
episode. Gengar right. shirt. Yeah. With the Gengar shirt. Uh, okay. All right. I'll take a photo. Fine. We'll have a photo shoot. It'll be fun. We'll do it. <laughs> Done. Uh, awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to us. We love and appreciate all of you. And we'll catch you next week, mm-hmm. as usual, like clockwork. We're always here. I'm Tom from Some Kind of Gaming. Don't forget to check me out on YouTube. I uh, have a girl that works with me, so you probably want to check her out, actually. She's arguably cooler. That's that's you. Yeah. That was your cue. I'm the girl that works with you. Yep. My name is Laura. Mm. Nice to meet you. See you next week. Oh, I'm Dan. And, um, <laughs> I'm present right now. No, I run iDigital Games, so jump onto iDigitalGames.com, the home for instant gaming. That's my tagline. That's what I'm going with. I like it, and it was easy to come up with. So Mm, I like it too. Straight to the point. Jump on our games uh, from Steam, mind you, you, are significantly cheaper than Steam pretty much at least 85 90% of the time sometimes by up to 50%. Can't go wrong. Who would honestly in their right mind go to Steam if you could go to iDigital Games and save money? Money. Everyone wants to save that stuff. <laughs> go, you could buy a game and an ice cream. It's all, having an extra ice cream is always better than just having the game. Happy days. You just- can actually buy two games to every game that you could buy on Steam, and I'm talking about AAA titles. Well, that's even better than ice cream. Well, that's like 10 ice creams. It is. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, we've rambled on for long enough. Thank you so much. We will all see you next week. Bye. Bye.